If you want, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is going to be the beginning of a new series where I'm going to be testing and doing wear tests and reviewing a bunch of best-selling drugstore foundations. I have tried most of these at least once, but I wanted to do a wear test slash full-on review on all of them so you can see how they perform. I'm going to be doing uh, very, very unf unflattering close-ups just to make sure you can actually see the texture of my skin. So obviously no filters and sometimes I feel like this camera doesn't focus properly. So I will be also doing close-up with my vlogging camera in front of a uh, window so you can see what it looks like in natural lighting. And all of this for me to kind of try to find the best drugstore foundation for me. I have pretty complicated skin, so I feel like pretty much everyone will be able to decide what the foundation looks like on their skin type because my cheeks are normal, my T-zone definitely gets oily, but I do have some dehydration, mostly around my nose, but sometimes the foundation would not work at all on a uh, person with dry skin. I'm gonna look scaly all over. So I feel like this could be helpful. I'm hoping it will be and hoping it's gonna be fun. So it's gonna be going on all week and I will link down below the playlist. I have already filmed a half and half review on two million foundations. So I will link that down below because those are two best-selling ones and I didn't want to redo it. So let's start. I'm gonna be starting this with this L'Oreal foundation. This is the Infallible Pro Matte and I have not worn this in so long and I thought it was about time that I did a proper review wear test again to remind myself if I actually still like this. I feel like whenever I had dry skin I found that it wasn't wearable for a daily basis because it's a bit too drying but my skin is definitely oilier than it used to be so I thought it would be fun. So I'm gonna be applying it with just a Real Technique sponge because that's what I prefer to apply my foundation with. I feel like it's a lot more forgiving and it applies a thinner amount and it's just more natural. I'm going to be using the shade uh, 102. I have three shades. I'll do a proper close-up. I swatched them on my hand to try and figure out which shade I would be and I feel like I'm probably in between 101 and 102 but um, 102 has a closer undertone for me so I'm going to try to apply it on my face. If I remember correctly it does oxidize a little bit which again we'll test on my hand and just see how it goes. So Let's apply half my face to see the coverage. My skin is doing pretty good right now. I am having some little bumps and redness uh, and breakouts overall, just my skin reminding me that it doesn't like lactose as much as I do. So we're gonna be able to see the coverage for that. Actually, let me zoom you in. So this foundation is like still, after all these years, one of the best selling foundation at the drugstore. Probably because one, it's fairly affordable. Two, it gives great coverage and does keep you matte if you have oily skin. But again, I feel like there's always new things coming out and we're all excited to try them, obviously. But it doesn't mean that uh, newer is better. So I have definitely done the mistake of just forgetting about some of my old favorites. That's kind of why I was doing that uh, series at one point where I was re-watching my old monthly favorites just to see, do I still use them? Did I find something better? Did I just forget about them? What's going on? What should I do? So I reduced the lighting a tiny bit so you can see the texture of my skin better, hopefully. Uh, wow, I have forgotten how much I like this. Uh, I feel like I can probably build it up a little bit on my forehead where I have breakouts, but my skin looks like I'm wearing a filter. Uh, I definitely noticed that it makes my pores a lot less noticeable. I mean, we all have pores, and I feel like here around my uh, nose is usually where I get they look more visible. But I would say that a thin layer like I applied all over my face definitely gives me like a very natural medium to full coverage. So I'm gonna to try to just build it up a tiny bit more where I have uh, a bit more redness, like here for example, and like maybe a tiny bit more there, just to see if I can cover little pimples a bit more. But wow, I had forgotten how much I like this. Like my cheek literally looks like I'm wearing, like I face my face. <laughs> I am liking this. So let's do the other half. By the way, this is half-half. I feel like you can definitely tell that this side is definitely more even and I don't feel like it looks cakey at all, which, wow. See, that's why I'm doing this. I had completely forgotten about this foundation. I think I'm gonna, depending on how it wears, obviously, I'm gonna have to put that back in my uh, rotation. Do you have any other uh, products from drugstore that you feel like people have forgotten about but you still are completely in love with because I need to start doing those videos a bit more. <laughs> I do feel like I'm applying quite a bit though. Like I feel like I, I had to use like about three times this amount to do on my face, which obviously sponge will make you use more product than a brush. 
but I think it's worth it just for the finish. I'm actually impressed that it's not emphasizing the dry patches on my nose. You're gonna see in like all the other videos some foundation. My nose looks like so scaly and this one I barely have like one little thing and I'm gonna be able to grab my tweezer, just pull it out and my nose looks better than it has in a while. I love the way my skin looks right now. I do feel like it's oxidizing. I can kind of tell already and you're gonna be, actually let me do it on my hand because it definitely oxidized. It does oxidize quite a bit as you can see though. So you have 101, 102, 103. 103 is definitely not my shade, so I'm gonna have to give this to a friend. I was trying to look in my collection all the shades I had, and yeah, that one is definitely not for me. But 102 is a good summer shade for me. 101, definitely more of a like winter one. So I think it's a pretty decent match, but like my neck is definitely paler than my arm and my face, but wow. Okay, let me do the rest of my makeup and I'll come back and do like crazy close-ups in front of the window. But I have to say, usually I always powder my foundation. I don't feel like I need to. I feel like it really dries matte and like almost a little powdery, but like in a good way. How did I forget about this foundation? It's this crazy. So I wanted to show you before I even do the rest of my makeup what it looks like because I'm so impressed with the way it looks. Uh, it's pretty dark outside, so I'm hoping that the lighting will still be okay. Let me zoom you in a lot. Um, hopefully, you can see the texture of my skin is like not bad at all. If anything, I feel like my pores are a lot less visible than they should be. And my nose, which again, you'll be able to compare to, whoa, this is very close, uh, to some of the other foundations I will be testing, but making sure it's zoomed perfectly on it, you can't see any, and I mean any skin, any dryness. I'm so impressed. And even my skin on my forehead, like I do have little bumps and everything is covered and just overall texture. <sighs> is so good. I am loving this so much. I... Wow. Quick update before I go on with my day. I wanted to show you what the makeup, how the makeup went on top of it. My cheek products had zero issue being blended. I applied the tiniest amount of loose powder just for consistency because I'm going to do the same thing for every foundation. And I could have totally skipped it, like 100%. And yeah, my cheek products look like better than ever. I am like so in love with this foundation. So I'm going to just remind myself how it wears today and show you how it goes and then again do some uh, close-ups in front of window if there are any changes but so far how did i ever stop wearing this foundation this is awesome okay so i've been wearing the foundation for seven hours and i wanted to update you because i'm starting to feel a tiny bit oily i feel like you might be able to see like a bit of shine on my forehead but it's like nothing usually this is a time where i would repowder but i won't because i want to try and wear the foundation as long as possible i'm gonna aim for at least 10 hours like probably more 12 and uh yeah i mean my skin has not looked this good in a while i'm like so shocked right now there's just a tiniest amount of dehydration around my nose and a tiny bit of oil peeking through but the foundation is not moving around it's still looking flawless i'm just I'm shocked. <laughs> so not that there's much to see, but I'm zooming you in. Like there's maybe a tiny bit of dehydration right there, but like it's nothing compared to what my skin has looked like in the last couple of weeks. So zero complaint there. And like I was saying, tiny bit of oil, but like really not that much. It's almost a glow, <laughs> almost. Uh, there's like no separation on my uh, chin. Like I've been testing some other foundations and like they've been looking so last update of the day, it's been over 10 hours now and I wanted to update you and I'm surprised how I'm not more shiny than this. I feel like usually between like the second update and the third one, I would become like oily, especially if I didn't retouch with some powder. And I'm definitely oily on my forehead, but my chin isn't that bad, my nose isn't that bad, even around my nose isn't that bad, and my skin looks flawless. I swear, I feel like this whole video is like me raving about this foundation, but it's one of those things that just happened that you're like, wow, I need to go back to some old favorites once in a while and just see if they're better than the new favorites or all the new things I've been testing because sometimes you just forget about stuff. So let me zoom you in one more time. So you can see the texture on my chin is still flat. Usually it would be where it would start like getting all yucky. And around my nose is still doing fine. My cheeks are obviously looking fine and I'm definitely oily on my forehead and between my brows, but I feel like if I were to just retouch, like I have a dry baby wipe, let me just like try to like remove some of the oil because I'm dying to do that. <laughs> I feel like, see it's already looking so much better and 
It doesn't look like the foundation moved. There's like literally no transfer on here. So this is just a very, very great long wear foundation. That's pretty crazy. I'm like in awe. Literally. Let's just say that this foundation passes the test. I am giving it a thumbs up. I completely understand why it's still, after all those years, a best-selling drugstore foundation. A favorite of mine. It's back into my rotation. I will be wearing this all summer for sure. I feel like it's not too heavy. I don't feel it on my skin and I feel like even when it gets warmer, I'm not gonna have an issue wearing it on a daily basis daily basis if I want to. I could always just apply a bit more moisturizer with it and just trying to make it a bit thinner if I don't feel like I need the coverage. But right now I literally forgot that my forehead especially, even my cheeks had like discoloration. I completely forgot about it because it looks so flawless. So yes, this one is a thumbs up. We are off to a good start. So don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe because you definitely don't want to miss the rest of this series. And I will be putting on the screen the videos that I've done that I recommend you check out. And I'll put again the link to the playlist down below. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.